Hi there, it is Karni or Chet. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everyone! Happy weekend! It's finally the weekend. This is me, Che. Welcome again to our YouTube channel, Che and Kevin's Adventure. So it had been a very long February for everyone, despite the fact that February only has lesser days than the other months of the year. But I've been so jam-packed with my deadlines and we haven't uploaded anything yet in our YouTube channel and that's why that I have decided that right before I go to bed in this Saturday morning before I go to bed I will make something for my for my for our subscribers and um, to be honest this topic that I'll be discussing tonight or this morning is something very personal and very close to my heart and this is entitled how I survived financially and emotionally um, during the pandemic the goal of which is to impart something very personal to everyone to our listeners to our subscribers who are also in, in lockdown or also in quarantine or also working from home um, something that could that we found useful to everyone that would be listening to us right now so if you are one of those working from home and currently isolated and alone keep on watching and if you have suggestions or comments that or any topics that you would want for us to discuss in our vlog in our channel you can comment down below and just a disclaimer this topic is also available in my vlog so I just extracted it I just wanted it to to be presented in our channel but you can check it right here my blog in WordPress so I will be um, leaving it up all to you and without further ado, now let's start our discussion. Number one, being more understanding of myself. Nothing is more tormenting than knowing that your personal discipline has gone way beyond your control. In this trying time where nothing seems to be in our complete grasp and things can go crazy and extreme anytime, it's now the best time to master the art of knowing our triggers, addressing our emotions, and acting upon them as quickly as we can. In such a fast-paced world, time can be valued as the most precious asset that we have and which at the same time has been equally robbed from us. During the past months, we were taught how to be numb and apologetic and be forgiving too. Any negative happening can be construed as something understandable and ordinary. I remember way back then how time and the world had been so fun to plan with and to forecast. I just woke up feeling none of those inside me are ever present anymore. I see days pass me by, watching each leaf fall down from the trees outside my window, seeing the same tree growing their new set of leaves the following week without me doing anything much in my life. Too many uncertainties and too many hopes I could not, that I could not hold on to. Yet, if there's one thing I've learned during the past months, it's knowing that happiness is subjective and that we are better than our emotions and feelings. No matter what the world puts us into, we still have the final say of teaching ourselves the appropriate manner of how and what to feel. There's not much that we can do in a day as we only have 24 hours to spend and which are mostly spent at work and with things productive yet counterintuitive of our own selfish desires. We can talk about anything but not all words seem to be comprehensible. We can chat with people yet enough could never seem enough. There's just too much to do with such a little time and one moment it's there, the next it could be gone in a blink of an eye. Our hopes and dreams seem like the stars in the sky, only here to stay for the night, with forever being not promised. 
just the thought of us breathing and waking up each morning is already a blessing we could definitely thank God for. No material things needed, no extravagant trips needed, required, no jewelries needed to be collected. Just purely us being understanding of ourselves, with our own limitations, our weaknesses, our shortcomings, and our own unaccomplished dreams. But the sweet fact remains that we only got ourselves to hold on to because we can never know what tomorrow could bring and how unpredictable times can become. So at this point of my life, where I seem to be taking the days one step at a time, I know I have a true friend inside me. I could judge and challenge myself, but I will understand myself every step of the way. Number two, finding time for my hobbies and setting alarms, reminders to give me that extra push. My typical day includes spending an average of 10 to 12 hours in front of my laptop while working at the comfort of my home. I may have isolated myself at home, but the amount of interaction that I do have with my colleagues are just about the same. Not to mention the series of meetings that I need to attend to and be mentally prepared for. Ever since this virtual setup has commenced. Needless to say, I have a career which demands my undivided time and effort attention and focus. I need to keep up with the demand of my work in order to produce output and meet de deliverables. Since I sometimes lose track of time, having this sense of boundary seems impossible. My personal and work life are intertwined and they do overlap with one another in terms of my priorities and feeling of self-fulfillment. Before starting the week, I do check emails work on manageable deadlines in the weekend, plan ahead for the coming week, and most importantly, block ahead my personal and work calendars. I have adopted this method of future blocking my tasks and deliverables for the entire weekend. This goes the same with the personal errands that I need to attend to, like groceries, paying the bills, tracking due dates, renewals, document processing, Communicating with my family in Cebu, finding the time when to hit that video call button, and allotting time for my financial budgeting. Forecasting my finance, finances and my cash flows in and out involves several months of foreseeable streams of income and identifying the financial obligations that I need to attend to early on. This practice does not skip my setting of my alarm clock and making activities such as praying, exercising, blogging and vlogging, beauty regimen, watching movies and sleeping to find their own sweet spots in my life. These are being preset to determine the occurrence that I'm expecting them to happen and in around what time of the day. Despite my busy schedule, I still make sure that I give ample time to listen to my favorite YouTubers, most especially to those that could keep uh, that could help me build my and strengthen my financial literacy. I also make sure to write down stuff and believe me, I've had numerous unfinished articles to date. I can't blame myself for losing track of completing them because most of the time, my work demands my energy and mental alertness that I often end work time feeling so, so exhausted. Another hobby of mine is reading. And I have bookmarked several pages to read on when I get an extra free time. No matter how busy life could get, I know I owe myself some personal time devoted to doing things I find fun and joyful. I may have hidden so much of my personal identity in social media, but believe me, the time seems to be more productive when I'm off any social media site often. This brings me to my next point. Number three, proper usage of social media and filtering what's helpful and relevant. So it had been three months now since I willfully made my way on and off Facebook. <laughs> no offense to people who are relying heavily on this social media platform. But my life had been pretty relaxing and more productive ever since. 
the energy I got in a day had been spent primarily to working and focusing on learning how to blog and vlog, I also have this thirst of productivity in me that I seem to have lost when I was too busy prying on other people's activities. I admit it's way more difficult than how I initially ever thought it could be, but I'm now reaping the fruits of my sacrifice. If there's a time I'd spend my free mind online, this usually is on listening to informative and contents which could really spark my curiosity and imagination. In terms of following content creators at YouTube, I've also been very selective. There are pages that I do admire, but whenever I do perform some sanity check on my feeds online, I tend to sometimes unsubscribe people because one, they either are not meeting my exact taste anymore, or two, they are advocating something that opposes my own values and beliefs. There's not really a specific checklist that I do maintain when looking for the perfect creators to listen to or are they, there any gender or location specific criteria but my list is a comprehensive collection of financial, fashion, funny and informative pages. Listing down some beneficial effects in slowing down my online usage includes one giving more time with myself even if it involves merely catching up with a long sleep or having uninterrupted interrupted movie time number two not judging my own decisions and actions based on what's commonly posted by people number three not feeling guilty of taking my own pace during the weekend since there are no people who've spent their days on productive purposes or may have made it appear to be like that I can do some comparison with. Number four, taking my time in achieving my own milestones and not punishing myself for not doing specific things at specific points in my life. And number five, saving up myself from exhausting and critically draining activity of commenting mentally on every post that I could come across with. Point being taken, I believe the internet should be considered as a pr productive tool in gathering information that we may not have known yet, and not to be a tool that can cause us depression, stress, or anxiety. It's definitely okay to reach out to people when you're at your most ready state than being compelled to do so against your will. After all, taking care of your mental health is a personal responsibility, and we are definitely accountable for that. We live in a world where we have the freedom to choose the things and emotions we feed ourselves with. This is the beauty of being in a democratic space where as long as we abide by the land's rules, we're practically allowed to do anything we so desire. No forcing whatsoever. Number four, creating and constantly enhancing my financial budgeting tools. My budgeting tools consist primarily of two separate files which I do maintain and update from time to time. The first file shows the cash flows of my money when they come in and out of my bank accounts and the other file is a combination of several tabs from salary, monitoring and allocation to list, listing of all my, as, of my assets and liabilities alongside their specifics, the various tabs for my monthly dues and amortization such as for the condominium, to monitoring of my rental expenses which are made monthly through my checking account, to the personal monitoring of my credit card juice and payments and the composition of each monthly payment. This system has been with me since 2012 and has eventually been evolving according to my current status and financial capabilities. I did not really adopt it from somewhere that we can find in the internet as I believe every monitoring file should be personal and relevant to our own investing, saving, and spending habits. These were essential parts of my life that I knew I had established the habit that when I had it doing back then had been very helpful in my budgeting for casting speed. In this difficult time of pandemic, it is very crucial to be wise with our financial health. And the scrutiny we must put into something must be something double or triple than the usual. Getting these kinds of files just taught me when 
and when not to make a purchase and if it's inevitably needed to be done how soon can i have it paid this gives me a view of the coming months income and expenditures and which helps my decision making to be based not only on the now but also on the future facing these saves me from cramming my budgeting period and or being caught totally off guard by any purchase that's going to impact my wellness and sanity in the present. I've been working with numbers almost all throughout the day in my career life as an accountant and if there's one thing I've learned from st strategic business planning it's the fact that a company which could be applicable as well to any individual can work very well with a budget and with the activity of doing a co comparison of the forecast versus the actuals. Number five, being realistic with my goals and keeping them simple. So the pandemic has brought an unexpected halt to basically each and every plan I have from marrying my longtime boyfriend to whether or not to raise kids right now what assets to acquire, let go or sustain, to vacation plans and anything that required resiliency level to the highest degree. I admit that pre-pandemic, I have been in a hurry with stuff that I could have handled slowly. But when the pandemic, um, global pandemic kicked off, I started to see things in a def different perspective and understanding where to put things in different chapters in my life. Surviving the pandemic also meant growing, going through my plans and examining them one by one by eradicating those I found to be not important up to delaying some and understanding the pros and cons of doing so. The times alone are tough and there could be no better way to punish yourself than holding on to plans that are not just time consuming to plan but would also require a lot of money. One resource that we need to manage intelligently from now and moving forward. Adopting the reward system whenever I accomplish a tedious task had also been helpful, especially during the, this time where we had been isolating ourselves from the world. This involves preparing and eating my favorite dishes, even simple ones, watching movies that were on my list for quite some time, getting a long sleep during the weekends, drinking my favorite tea every day, and listening to informative and relatable blogs. All of the mentioned do not necessarily involve spending a ton of cash, but yet the relief and the relaxation those bring me are beyond what we can call priceless. After a long week at work, I ensure in keeping and maintaining my personal and wonderful space to rekindle with myself and reconnect with my whole being. Some personal goals which I used to have but now have given up the idea of even acquiring one day or anytime the soonest or jumping into motherhood soon, traveling to and fro my hometown, having a flawless life that's close to perfection, and meeting my old friends just because I wanted to. It had been several months now when I realized that I need to give up on those goals and I have really acquainted myself with not even missing or entertaining the thoughts of them. Of course, I went through the stages of acknowledgement, denial, up to acceptance before finally moving on with this new normal. This new normal could be temporary, but the effects it brought our lives and plans will always be life-changing. Being that, I managed to convince myself that they aren't really life-changing, but rather life improving that's me feeding positivity to my brain and moving on with what the world is practically offering me number six maintaining a healthy lifestyle as much as i can i de-stress and unload after every working day my day starts with drinking fresh ginger tea during the first 30 minutes of my day and eating a balanced diet I also shifted from one brand of vitamin to another in the hope of checking checking out what really works out for me. Currently, I am taking these vitamins that could give me the much needed protection and boost all throughout the day. Incorporated also in my everyday routine is a less than an hour workout 
to sweat and keep the blood pumping correctly. My must-have in the fridge is the stocks of green and leafy vegetables which are included in our foods from time to time. When tired and exhausted, instead of munching junk foods, I eat okra, potato, kamote, and pipino to fill in my hungry stomach. Also, no matter how long my day had been, I always make sure to get 7 to 8 hours of sleep daily. With exceptions on weekends, as I allow my body to rejuvenate through 10 to 12 hours of sleep. Don't judge me guys. With quality and uninterrupted sleep before starting yet another day at work. My bedroom is also light-free and noise-free during sleep time. With the temperature being not too cold nor not too hot, I face a blank white wall during my sleep which I find to be very helpful as it somehow gives me an impression of detoxifying my brain until I fall to sleep. Listening to soothing and upbeat music also help lessen my sudden change of moods and calm me in a matter of minutes. Sleeping with my phone not connected in the internet or Wi-Fi is another must-have in my bedtime. Even if I consider myself as a heavy sleeper, the, f the fact of checking my phone every now and then, answering to personal emails, deleting some emails in my inbox, emptying the spam and recycle bin is an activity that does not help in my concentration to sleep fast. Water with lemon is another thing to have occasionally. As we all know, we needed the internal cleanse as much as we clean the outside part of our bodies. Avoiding sweets and fatty foods were also helpful in keeping it low with unhealthy intake. I refrain from drinking sugary coffee as I've noticed this make me restless and hyped. The sugar rush is something my body isn't used to. Aside from not including this in my daily spending, I can say that this kind of coffee that we can purchase from our favorite brands is not really among my favorites and it is but very rare for me to buy one in several months. But this doesn't mean I'm ex exempted from drinking coffee as I also needed that bump in my daily living at some points of my at some points in my working day. Maybe the difference lies in keeping it unusually plain not so delicious and to be consumed just because I needed an ounce of that caffeine and not because it's a luxury I'm spoiling myself with. Number seven, I recognize it, I acknowledge it, I talk about it, I get honest with my emotions. Being isolated during this pandemic forced me to act normal against this unique situation. Unlike before, where there are a lot of options available to fix the broken ego and exhausted mind such as enjoying fresh open air while sipping our favorite beer in the middle of a noisy crowd under the stars, or eating out and stress eating with our favorite Korean foods, or just simply hanging out in the mall, doing window shopping and strolling the day out. These activities were just too impossible to do nowadays without feeling that remorse of exposing ourselves to what might bring harm to our health. Despite the limitations, we are obliged to function just the same at work and at home. No time for drama or ranting or crying, just putting on that several shields of sanity that could help us get through each and every struggling day. I'm no exception to crying myself out during bedtime or just going a little more paranoid with even the littlest stuff. My moods can change unnoticeably without even recognizing the triggers. One moment I could be laughing and furious the next minute. My real self is just so full of unpredictability during this time of isolation. Over the months, I kind of sort like mastered the art of following the process or system when faced with such a dilemma. First, I pause and look back and find that ultimate reason which caused the sudden spike or shift of emotions. This is being done effectively by recognizing the triggers and acknowledging the fact that either I'm too sad or too mad or anxious over something. I believe there's no other better way than to face it head-on and remaining true to ourselves. 
The next step involves me talking about it. I do not let it consume my entire day, but I respectfully pause and give myself to talk or discuss about it to someone I trust and whose opinions do matter to me. Talking it out does not only give the satisfaction of venting out, but it equates to that physical feeling of breathing out any negative air lurking in the inside. I allow myself to be judgmental, criticizing, and even harsh without apologizing about it. People as we are, there's just enough limit to our being nice and understanding. If it takes me crying over it, so be it. I owe myself that much that there's no way I could go on hiding and harboring unwanted thoughts inside my brain. Being real in front of people I trust, of course, and being honest about everything gives me that liberating feeling that after all, it was me being human with emotions. This process had always ended up with me being at peace with someone or with myself. It is a rewarding process of knowing that we are not escaping it and we are holding ourselves accountable for every word said and for every action action done. Saying I'm sorry, thank you, or I did not mean it is an amazing way to cope up with anything that needs to be fixed and to not collect an unwanted baggage that we have to carry over from today to tomorrow. Number eight, praying constantly and doing daily reflections. Living with gratitude in this unprecedented time requires extra effort to be grateful to the things around us. The simple things we usually took for granted pre-pandemic may sometimes turn out to be the one of the few things we essentially need in order to surpass the turmoil of this unwanted event. Ever since, I have always been a religious person and my relationship to God has strengthened all the more as I went through this difficult time of adjusting and readjusting my life goals and priorities. There's something inside that only prayers can understand. This is the reason why I have kept this on the last on the list but definitely is the most important as I wanted to leave an impact to the reader or to you, the listener, that with God, the heavy is bearable and there's no such thing as burden because as we go through our daily prayers and reflections, the Almighty One is going to teach us a very important lesson in life. And that is saying things in a lighter and brighter perspective. There's always just hope. And even if it may not come as quickly as we wanted it to, God is teaching us to persevere per patiently while keeping the love of life burning in our hearts. My day starts and ends with prayers. And even during some parts of my day when I am going through a tough meeting or facing a critical task, I find myself kneeling down and lifting up everything to God. Then right before I knew it, I survived the day feeling happy, contented, and very much grateful with all that God has given me. The work and career, knowledge, talents, skills, opportunity to do the important things in life, and the at attitude of appreciating everything around me. I believe God is in control and He is watching over us all day and all night. He has plans of making us prosper amidst the hurdles and obstacles. The lessons brought by this will eventually mold us to become more deserving of all the wonderful gifts God has given us. All we need is to pray fervently, opening, opening up our hearts and minds to God, praying for His mercy and help all the time as this is what God wants us to do, glorifying Him, prioritizing Him above anybody else and anything else, and ensuring that all our actions will lead us to the path that He intends for us to take. When we embody faithfulness and complete trust, our happiness is beyond compare. No material gift or earthly things can ever even be at par to this great feeling of experiencing the holy life despite our limitations of being a human. We may be imperfect, we may sin, we may hold grudges, we may forget to forgive, we may continue 
harboring ill feelings towards something or we may even doubt ourselves but God will tirelessly embrace us in his loving arms in every single day of our lives and so we've reached the end of our discussion <laughs> or fun session tonight I hope you do appreciate the time that we have spent um, in this vlog and I hope in the littlest way possible that I can in any manner that I could think possible I hope I was able to uh, impart something very relevant and personal to all of you and which you could bring as you go on with your everyday lives during this pandemic so I created this blog in order for me to remind myself that when the storm brought about by the sudden changes in this pandemic will finally be over i can look back and say that i finished stronger than yesterday wiser than before more resilient than how i have been several years ago this is also me hoping that through this vlog or vlog i can import something very personal from me and into the world this is me saying that hey i it had been almost a year now but we're here alive and grateful to be alive wishing everyone to be safe and well during this trying time just hold on believe in god as he believed in you he knows you can make it through with a smile and with optimism you never thought you possessed take time to pause reflect and find it in you cheers to survival and happiness be safe and i'll keep in touch with you in my next vlog bye good night